The New York Giants have released their depth charts for tomorrow night's game against the Detroit Lions, and there were a few surprises that I stumbled across as I was going through them, and we're going to react to them here on the show. But we are one sleep away from Giants football being back and the offseason being in the rearview mirror. If you are ready for tomorrow night, Giants, Lions, NFL football, like this video right now. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate everybody for stopping by as we break down the latest news and rumors that surround this football team. As we are just one sleep away from actual real-life football, we got to talk about who's going to be playing for the Giants. Unsure at this moment if any veteran offensive or defensive starters were, were, are going to play. And if I had to bet, I would say guys like Daniel Jones, Kayvon Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence, Brian Burns, are most likely not going to play, which means we're going to get an extended look at the backup. So we're going to go position by position, going through the depth charts, and I'm going to give you my takeaways. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball. No surprises here as Daniel Jones is going to be QB1 for this football team, and he is going to hold that job as long as he continues to win football games. I've come to the conclusion that if the Giants at any point this season fall four games below 500, I think that is the moment that Daniel Jones will be benched, but this preseason, I am going to be paying attention very closely to the QB2 battle, because a lot of people think it's just going to be Drew Locke's job, and if I had to bet, I would think Locke wins that job, but as I know Tommy DeVito, he's got a chip on his shoulder, he is one competitive SOB, and he is going to fight for his life as a New York Giants quarterback all preseason long as he tries to make this 53-man roster. My question to you, though, is this, who should be QB2? Is it Tommy Cutlets? Is it Gabagoo? Or is it Drew Locke? Which one of these players do you want to see be the QB2 on this roster? The Giants running back depth chart didn't really make all that much sense to me. Because if you've been paying attention in training camp, if you've been paying attention at all to what any of the people at training camp are saying, it's Tyrone Tracy's job to lose. Eric Gray does not seem like he is the actual running back two on this team. I would actually put him as RB4, with Tyrone Tracy as RB2, Dante Miller as RB3, and then Eric Gray as RB4. The Giants, they did have Jay Sean Corbett listed on the depth chart, but he got waived with an injury designation, and he actually returned to the IR as he did not get picked up by anybody else. So that's why I see him on this roster, but he is not on the team. Really excited to see this running back battle unfold. We know Motor Singletary is going to be the lead back. He is your RB1, but that RB2 job is up for grabs. Someone is going to win it. I think it's going to be Tyrone Tracy. I do not think it'll be Eric Gray. Let's talk about the receivers. Maybe the most attractive position group to the fan. This position group for a long time has been really ugly for the New York Giants. Since Odell Beckham Jr. left, the Giants haven't had a wide receiver one, and now they do with Malik Neighbors, who the Giants have listed as wide receiver one. They followed up then by Darius Slayton, Jalen Hyatt and Wandale Robinson. You can lock in all four of those players making this team. But then you got guys like Isaiah Hodgins. Allen Robinson has looked good in camp at time. Bryce Ford Wheaton has made some big time plays. We know they like Isaiah McKenzie and Gunnar Olszewski for what they could do on special teams. So it's going to be a battle all the way up until week one against the 0-1 Minnesota Vikings to decide which six or seven receivers are going to make this team. I want to see... The Giants give an extended look to maybe a guy like Bryce Ford Wheaton if he's able to play. I know he left practice a couple of days ago. Not sure if he'll give it a go. Allen Robinson, I think he's still got some gas left in the tank. And I think Isaiah Hodgins is going to prove some people wrong once again. We'll talk more depth charts around the corner. But first, I got to give a major shout out to today's sponsor, the number one ticketing app in the game. That's Game Time. Open up your app store. Download the Game Time app. Use that promo code CHATSPORTS and get $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. I've used all of the ticketing apps out there, and none of them are as user-friendly, and none of them take care of their customers quite like GameTime does. My favorite feature they have is when you can look at the all-in pricing because we've all seen it. We've all done it. Oh, these tickets look good. I can get four for 100 bucks. Then you get to checkout, and it's like, why am I having to pay $500? I don't want to get hit 
by hidden fees, and you can solve that problem with the all-in pricing drop-down menu that Game Time has. And maybe you want to go to a concert or a theater event or a comedy show this summer. Maybe you want to catch the Yankees or the Mets before the summer is over and the kids are back to school. You can get your tickets with Game Time, the best seats for the lowest price guaranteed. Prices actually drop as the events get closer. So if you're a procrastinator like me, it's going to be the app for you. I'm a big fan. Check it out. Download the app, create an account, and use the promo code CHATSPORTS. That's C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off your first purchase. I only use game time. I got to go to a concert this summer. I'm going to some Knicks games this year. I already got my tickets with game time. You should do the same. I'll make sure all that information is clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. I want to spend some time here on the Giants tight end depth chart. Because I'm going to be honest with you, this is not what the Giants tight end depth chart looks like inside the coaches' meetings. Theo Johnson, whether it's in preseason game one, preseason game two, or three, or maybe it takes until week one against the 0-1 Minnesota Vikings, but Theo Johnson is going to be your starting tight end. And the fact that he is listed as your fourth tight end behind Bellinger, Cager, and Manhurts, that's a joke, man. And I'm not going to fall for the trap. I am I can see the smoke and mirrors that is not going to happen. Theo Johnson is the tight end one on this team. Bellinger is the guy that's going to own that title until he loses it or until Theo Johnson takes it from him. But I am very confident in saying the tight end, if injuries do not deter this, the tight end has the most catches, targets, yards, and playing time will be Theo for the Giants. Brian Dable loves him. He really matches up with the type of player and archetype they want at that position. I got respect for Bellinger. I think he's a really good tight end too. Just not a tight end one, and that's Theo Johnson's job, hopefully, for the foreseeable future. The position group that everyone wants to talk about with Big Blue. The bullies in the trenches, the offensive line, the position group that has held this team back for as long as I can remember. You got Andrew Thomas starting at left tackle, no shock there. John running at left guard, 100%. John Michael Schmitz at center. He's going to be your starting center. He is dealing with some injuries right now. Don't actually expect him to play against the Detroit Lions. They've got Aaron Stinney at the right guard spot with Jermaine Illuminor at right tackle. My biggest takeaway from this is I think that they came out with this post on their website before they really knew that Greg Van Roten was going to be a part of this team. Van Roten will be your starting center as long as John Michael Schmitz is out. And then when JMS comes back, Greg Van Roten will be your starting center. Right guard, Aaron Stinney will be that flex guard for you. Evan Neal comes back. I still expect Jermaine Illuminor to be your starting right, uh, starting right tackle with Evan Neal working as that swing guy. But game one against the Vikings, who are already 0-1, that's what we're calling them on this channel. You're going to have Andrew Thomas. You're going to have John Runyon, John Michael Schmitz, Greg Van Roten, and Jermaine Illuminor. That might be the best week one Giants offensive line since Eli Manning was on this team. And that's not a joke. What's your confidence level in that starting five, though? I want you to be honest with me. It's not perfect, but it is miles better than what it has been. Scale one to ten, one being you're not confident. Ten, you got the most confidence in the world in him. From O-line to D-line, and let's talk about the trenches inside the middle. You know, sexy Dexy, number 97, the best interior defensive lineman. He's going to be a captain for this team, the face of the D-line. But the question is, who is going to be playing next to him? They've got Raheem Nunez Rochez there right now, but I think it is a competition, competition between Nacho, Jordan Riley, and a surprise UDFA out of SMU, Elijah Chapman. Everybody I've talked to that's been at training camp has told me that Chapman has popped off the page. He provides a skill set that really outside of Dexter Lawrence, these interior defensive linemen do not have. At six foot seven, uh, six foot 280 pounds, excuse me, he's not someone that's going to be a great run stopper or a block shedder and be able to control that line of scrimmage. But he is a pass rusher and he can get it done from inside. And Shane Bowen has said multiple times, on passing downs, especially third and long, he likes to have four players on the defensive line that can get after the quarterback, and that might be the way that Chapman ends up making this team. Let's talk about the edge rushers, the meat and the potatoes of this defense, the position group that has the most assets poured into it. 
Brian Burns, the big-time offseason acquisition. He gave up a second-round pick and $150 million. He's been the best Giants defender all training camp long. He looked great in joint practices, and that's what you want to see. Hopefully, your 3K, Von Thibodeau, becomes more of a consistent player, and he ups the frequency of those splash plays. He did have a good year last year, but I want to see it more consistently. They're going to have Aziz Ojolari after him, and then after those three guys, it's really a question mark. Will it be Boogie Basham? Who's going to step up? I'm not so sure, but I do like the three-man rotation of Burns, Thibodeau, and Ojolari rotating and staying fresh. So on those third and longs, they could just put their hand in the dirt or stand up and pin their ears back and create and generate pressure. Inside linebackers are next up on today's show. Bobby O'Karake and Micah McFadden are your two starters. No really surprise there. You got Deontay Johnson and Carter Coughlin as the next two guys up. And I think there is a real competition going on between McFadden and Deontay Johnson. You see Matthew Adams, a backup as well as alongside Darius Moose out of the rookie out of UCLA and Darian Beavers. McFadden, I think, is the better player than Deontay Johnson right now. McFadden over 100 tackles last year. Struggled a little bit, I would say. Um, not a little bit. He struggled at the beginning of the year actually finishing plays. Had one of the higher missed tackle percentages amongst all players in the NFL. But if he can sure that up, I think he's going to be a legit player in this league. You watch him. He's got good eyes. He diagnoses plays fast. He plays fast. And he gets downhill playing sideline to sideline. I really like him. But I love that there's competition with the second year UDFA out of Toledo, Deontay Johnson has credited his success early on in training camp because of the defensive scheme. He said it's very similar to what they ran at Toledo when he was there, and I want to see him go to work Thursday night against the Detroit Lions, a very physical football team. The position group I am most worried about on defense is the cornerback depth chart, and I'm going to tell you right now, Cordell Flott is not your CB2. I don't believe your CB2, who's going to play week one against the 0-1 Minnesota Vikings, is on this roster. But I love to see Drew Phillips, the third-round pick out of Kentucky, being named the starting nickel with Isaiah Simmons behind him and Nick McLeod behind him. For the first time all offseason long, we saw Nick McLeod work with the first-team defense on the opposite side of the field of Deontay Banks. If that, if the corners we just showed you are going to be the guys for week one, I expect the trio to be Banks, McLeod, and Phillips. I don't know if it's going to be McLeod, because I don't think the Giants are confident in their backup corners, considering they've added five veteran minimum corners since the draft ended. But I love that McLeod, for the first time all offseason, got reps with the first team over Flott. I want Flott to be that guy. But he just continues to show, in my opinion, and I think in a lot of other people's opinions, that he's not ready for that task. At the safety position, no real shockers here. Jason Pinnock, uh, Pinnock, excuse me, shout out to Jay Penny, one of the more underrated players in this league. He's going to be your starting free safety. Jane Bowen said the starting strong safety job is Dane Belton's to lose. He has pretty much said Tyler Newbin can't take his job if he can't practice. Was dealing with a little bit of a calf injury early on, but he has come back and he's made some big time plays. And I expect to see them all on the field at the same time together. You got Elijah Riley as the first or the second string free safety. I think that will actually be Javarius Owens. And we're going to see how that really shakes out the rest of the offseason and preseason. Now the special teamers, the specialist, Jamie Gillen. He's going to be your punter. Graham Gano is your kicker. And then you have Gunnar Olszewski as your kick returner and punt returner. Giants signed him midway through the year last year as they continued to have punt returner issues. Fumbles by Eric Ray. Fumbles by Sterling Shepard and Adore Jackson getting hurt last year. Uh, I think that's the way that Olszewski makes this team. And then Casey Kreider also, once again, going to be your long snapper. There was a lot of talk about Malik Neighbors catching punts at practice earlier this week. And I don't mind him catching punts. He probably should be ready to do that if so. But I don't want him returning punts consistently because we've seen in the Giants' luck that some of these guys end up getting hurt. We saw Dory Jackson miss like eight games when the Giants threw him out there. But I love the idea of having neighbors as a weapon to potentially throw out there if you, don't, if you do want a big return like the Giants did when Odell Beckham Jr. was on this team. Because when the ball is in OBJ's hands, like when the ball is in Malik Neighbors' hands, he can go the distance and he can change the way a game is being played. We've gone through every single position group on this team. Now it's your turn to let me know. What is your official grade for the New York Giants roster? Get out your red pen for me and let me know 
A, B, C, D, or F. Sound off and be honest. And make sure you are following me over on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, at Marshall Green underscore. Hit me up over there, and I better see all of your beautiful faces. Tomorrow night, an hour before kickoff, as we're going to be live on the channel for a watch party, because Giants football is